Hey folks, Doodlebutt here. There is one pen that comes up most often on the recommendation list of if you get started into fountain pens, and that is this little puppy here, the Pilot Metropolitan. I did not start with this pen. In fact, I just got this the other week from a local person here, the member of the Vancouver Fountain Pen Club. Well, actually just pen club, uh, mostly fountain pens we chat about. But uh, she had a little overindulgence in her introduction into the fountain pen world and was purging some of her remorse pens. So uh, we met up, took this off her hands for a very attractive price and uh, wanted to find out for myself, is this a half decent pen or have I been missing out or was it good that I didn't get one? So what I'm going to do is run you through the pen, talk about it, give you a general sort of overview. There's no shortage a video is doing that. I will dig a little bit deeper and get into some fine details and engineering points and uh, material choices and how this thing was built and why it was built the way it was and try to figure out, in fact, is this a good pen and then give you some closing thoughts. But first up, I figured do some glam shots. So cue some music and transition. And we're back. So here are some of the common pens that get recommended or you might want to pick up uh, as far as price point goes when you first get in the fountain pens. So, uh, you know, we've seen these all before, but one common thread between these is they're all plastique. Uh, aside from a metal cap here or there, but these are all plastic pens, typically injection molded uh, for the most part. But then we got this little puppy here. It's a metal pen, a mostly all metal pen so that's a little bit different the price point still very attractive as well so we're going to talk about how they made it how they did it hope you like the glam shots i think this is a pretty uh pretty looking one this is the retro pop version in purple so let's get into it so this is an aluminum build pen nice little clip on here it has the uh, japan on the side some nice little uh lines there to go with it clippy clippy you know nice and tight on there as well. Smooth, no finials, no end bits at all. Has this little collar on here with some, uh, that looks like that's printed on there. That's some little design work and your Pilot Japan. Little snap clip, uh, pop cap, sorry I should say. Snap cap, pop cap. Uh, decent satisfying motion. I'll get into that in a moment. I wish it was just a little more substantial, but that's okay. Comes off, posts on there quite nicely quite securely and even for someone like myself with a reasonable uh, large hand it fits in there not too bad even unposted i do like it posted as well it's uh so with a pilot pen it's their own proprietary deal as far as filling system i uh just dropped the pen here when i was getting set up so stuff going everywhere i was taking it apart too so i got some extra ink going around here but there's two types of converters you can get one's the con 40 which I haven't used it personally. If I've seen it in person, it looks like garbage and everyone else says it is. And then you got this one, they call it the Con B, uh, probably because it has like a bladder or something like that that they want to do. Um, so it's got a little ink sack in here, ink bladder that's squeezy, squeezy, and it fills up. You can also pop it off and put in the pilot cartridges. So fairly standard stuff, little section here, it tapers. It is a fairly smaller section, but this part is... Uh, plastic, which I don't mind at all. I think that's a good decision. Uh, it's also to deal with to do with the price as well that you had to make that plastic. But I like that because all metal, especially anodized ones, I do find uh, depending on the anodized finish, some of them they get away with it. They do a great job. But this one, uh, if that was anodized, the same smoothness as the rest of the pen, I would say that would not be very user friendly. It does go fairly narrow. So this is a fairly narrow section uh, compared to some other pens. So it's not my super preference, but uh, a, you know, regular size hand, I would say you can get along with it. it. Does have a bit of a step down here, so this is the surface here that mates with the cap to give you that little snap action. There's a little adjustment they could do on there, I think, to make it a little more of a satisfying pop, pop, you know, pleasing snap action. But all in all, not too bad. That you know, that might bug you. 
that bugs me a little bit. It's not the most comfortable. I would use this for kind of notes and stuff if I was doing a longer writing session. I, I don't think I would go with this one as much. So that's a just general talk. Let's get into some details and go through how this thing was made. Looking at the cap here, we got a nice little clip, got the detail on there. These are just stamped out, put on their chrome plated uh, little clip. Now one thing when you do have an anodized pen and the clip, you can see uh, and the surface area is not too bad, but you got it's going to hit those edges. That's where it's going to touch. So I could see over time, maybe leave in the comments, uh, the contact point that potentially coming off and getting down to bare metals. That is a slippery little sucker. And I got really dry hands, especially this time of year in the cold Canadian winter. This is printed onto the body. I do like this this purple and inside of there, maybe I'll turn the light on here in a second there. Let's see if we can see some detail, but we got a cap liner in there and you can see those, the focus is bad, but those four uh, little bumps that are in there, that's what engages onto the pen body. If we can get the right focus on here, I'll try to point, it's that little bump right there. So those, there's four of them. Oh, the heater's turning on in here. All right, turn the heater off so I didn't get the background noise, but those there's four of these bumps that are on there. And what that does is it engages here with the pen and will go over top this collar, right? So you can see that, that detail. It uh, goes over top and then you can see that little groove down there. So that drives it home and secures it. Now, one thing they could have done, it feels like this wants to go in a touch deeper, but then of course it bottoms out on this collar right here. It almost feels like this wants to go a touch more. They could have made that groove. I'd say just a little bit deeper, maybe just come back an extra half millimeter um, and then put this back just a touch or do that internally in the cap liner, just so it, it seems like it wants to snap a touch more, like just a little bit more securely. But other than that, pretty simple mechanism. It's gonna do usually in, in one of two ways, I don't have to get so close now, is uh, the snapping mechanism will be here up near the end of the section somewhere and there'll be something deep in the cap that grabs it or just what they've shown here, the detail will be up here and it caps that way. So smart thinking, again, that cap liner serves two purposes. One, to snap the cap onto the pen securely, but also give a layer of protection. So when you're popping it on there, you're not gonna damage this beautiful anodized finish and scratch it up. Overall, uh, burrs and fit and finish is quite nice. Uh, these edges are notorious for uh, having sharp cuts and you know, little corners on there and whatnot, not having that edge done quite right. They've done a very good job in there. Uh, you know, like say this Jinhao, I use this around the office a lot, especially if I have to do envelopes and things like that. But this cap is got a quite a crusty edge on it. So looking at the main body of the pen, we got a few different bits here. We got your main aluminum part, and then this is a sleeve that goes over top. So if we get you in there, you can see um, there's a line here as well. So uh, this material is a little bit lower. This sleeve goes over top. This is printed. So I'd be curious how they print that because it's always on curved surfaces. It's a little tricky. That stamp is not a big deal. Um, but getting that uh, pattern printed all the way around and have everything line up, they did a very good job on there. And then we got this uh, steel piece here, this collar. You got some threads on the inside. Now, you got to be careful sometimes when you're doing metal threads going into this plastic section on the pen. But they did a very good job. It stops so you can't over tighten it. So that collar is going to hit there that's nice and secure but not going to go too crazy but the big thing on this one is they have a nice thread profile uh not too coarse not too fine and uh, just the pitch and everything on there and finish of the threads is quite nice versus uh there's some other pens so again going back to this Jin Hao, uh it works okay but you can just see sort of the other way around too the uh the threads here are metal versus these are plastic going into there and on the receiving end, they're metal here versus plastic. So uh, these are the ones that typically want to cut, right? So now we're, those are cutting into the plastic versus it's the other way around on the Metropolitan. So you can just see that that profile is quite a bit sharper versus you go into these plus they're plastic. So uh, yeah, they're just not as deep. So better, better thread choice on the Metropolitan.
Turning the light back on, we do have a liner inside of the main body as well. Doesn't go the full depth, just, I don't know, about a third the way or something like that, I guess. Don't know exactly, 100% sure why that's there. Maybe it's just for assembly to stop things from going in too far for bottoming out. I'm not sure exactly how. I, I don't think that's what its primary function is. It could be just to avoid metal on metal contact with the uh, converter here, and we'll speak about that next. One of the reasons I was reluctant to get the pen had to do with this little converter. A lot of people just bitch and moan about this. Now I've been taking the pen in and out and apart here, <laughs> so I'm dropping it, so no wonder there's some going everywhere. But um, yeah, I'm gonna go through exactly how this thing was made. Actually, I don't mind this converter at all. I think it's it's completely fine. So we'll go into that in a second. Uh, of course, you have this plastic section. Now, one thing with it, you got these, I'm not quite sure why these little points are here. I don't know if that has to do with the cartridges. I know Pilot has their own proprietary cartridges. So that could be one thing you would complain about with this pen is if you're big into cartridges, you got the Pilot lineup of cartridges and that's it. Um, with the converter course that lets you use whatever ink you want. But this plastic here, it is a bit soft. There we go, that lighting again. So if you give it a squeeze, you can deform it a bit. Um, so yeah, I just, that's one uh, potential break point. I thought if, if there's ever a spot where this pen could break, it would be probably somewhere in either one of those sides of those notches. Uh, you can see the, the marks here from the injection molding from when it was in the mold. Where are they here? Here they go. They run along the length of the pen, both on both sides. Not really noticeable. You don't really feel it but you can see it nonetheless. But coming back to this converter, actually, uh, I don't mind this converter at all and how it's made is, is quite clever. So the biggest thing you gotta think about is price point. So this pen retails, uh, I picked it up for 15 Canadian, so got a pretty sweet deal on that puppy, um, but I think about 20 bucks US brand new. So the cheapest way to make something, if you're gonna be using metal especially, uh, is wire, very quick, there's no wastage, Next up is sheet metal. So that's how this little converter is made. They do a very good job of it. So you can see here, obviously there wasn't an off the shelf tubing that would fit uh, what their design needs were. So this is actually a piece of sheet metal. It'll come through a form and get formed into a tube and you can see that weld line uh, right along the length of that converter. If you can see that line right there, that's where it was welded together, so it's a solid piece. Um, so that's done quite nice. That's a separate part all on its own, gets cut to length. And then we got the little squeeze mechanism. So on here, you can see a couple marks there. So this is a very simple design. So this is one piece of metal, it's bent. Um, it's also got a curve to it, if we can pick that up. So it's gonna, see it's got a nice little radius on there to fit to the ink bladder, to the ink sac and there's a couple spot welds. So that's how that's secured. Spot welding is a great way to do it. Very cheap, no fasteners, no parts, just goes in the machine, pachunk, pachunk, done. You're spot welded, you're in there. That's not gonna pop off and that is a very good job on that spot weld. I'm happy with the work on that. Of course, they put their name on that piece of metal. While you're at it, you might as well. So that's bent around, popped in here. So this end is fixed and this is the end that does the squeezy. So you're like, how do you hold this thing together? Yeah, I just spot weld that one piece in there and this bar here can fly in the breeze. I'm, it's full of ink, so I'm not gonna go crazy hard. And that will squeeze the sack. Uh, and by the way, it, it comes with a little bit of talc on it, which again, if you're in a hot climate, that's not a bad idea to do on your own sack in the summer months. So they're doing that same practice here uh, on the converter. Now, again, this is a more modern day uh, material versus some of the vintage pens. So I don't know how much breakdown there is of that uh, ink bladder, but I, I guess it probably lasts a decent length of time. And then you got these little crimp marks at the end. They're not perfectly uniform, but they're pretty darn good. So you have this plastic insert that will most likely be on a mandrel. This goes over top and pachunk, it crimps everything all into one piece. So how this is made, like it looks really good. Honestly, I don't see this thing breaking at all. It's trouble free. Yeah, I know you can't see the ink level inside the converter, um, but it is nice one-handed operation. You pop the bottle, 
This is all assembled, of course. You put it in and then boom, boom, give it a squeeze and you can ink up your pen. So that is one thing with the cartridge converter, like the converter that comes with you. Uh, let's grab one here. You got a kind of two hand operation when you're inking, right? And the, <laughs> the whole, the whole pen came right, a, right apart on me there. Look at that. Uh, okay. Uh, figure that come back to that. But, um, when you put it in, you got to hold it and then you're driving that piston up and down, which can lead to potential slop, as we can see there, versus one-handed operation, just squeeze your sack and ink comes in or out, that's the way to do it. So that pretty much concludes sort of like the, the technical uh, overview, little analysis I did on the pen, but I gotta say, I am impressed for this price point, having a full metal pen, you got anodized finish, you got this cool thing, you know, that's got to get printed, that's another step. They're making their own converter. They did some smart things where that's plastic. Um, again, machining is, is very expensive versus other things. So there's a nice mix of having real quality parts and a good solution to the problem, uh, but also doing it in a very cost effective way but still yielding a high quality part. So I can see the design decisions that went into here and I understand what they're dealing with with the price points. So I think they did a really overall very good job on the build of this pen and the price point it's coming out as, uh, I think they really hit the target there. So I'm gonna do a little writing sample on the pen just to show you that. I don't know how important that is, but. The main reason I got this pen is it does come with lots of nib options, but this has the CM, so I guess it's like the cursive italic medium. So it's a bit like a stubby type. It looks more stubbish to me versus cursive italic, but whatever. So I, you know, the having another fine nibbed or medium nib pen didn't really intrigue me much, but the fact got a Skokum price on this pen and it had the nib I wanted and a cool color I couldn't say no. We got pen, we got ink, we have paper. So I'll do a quick little writing sample and uh, I'll also compare it to the uh, Twisby. So I got the Twisby Eco in a 1.1 stub. I thought I'll do the writing sample compare as well. So having a closer look, we can see with the Metropolitan, looks like we're getting a little bit bigger line variation than we are with the Twisby 1.1 millimeter. The Twisby does underwrite. So if you measure this, this isn't 1.1 millimeter. So this is probably a little bit closer to a one millimeter. And this, I think runs about 0.8 or something like that. So what can we say about the Pilot Metropolitan as either a, uh, first pen you get or uh, one of the first ones you get when you get into fountain pens. I would say everything that people say about it's pretty valid. I like the build quality, the construction. You got lots of choices of nibs. That's pretty cool. You can get a uh, stubbish cursive italic type nib on a, a pen of this price point. Like I said, I like the build. The only things you might not like, uh, it is a fairly narrower section. So if you've got a big mitt, uh, might not be your absolute favorite. I would like something bigger. I do hold it a little bit further back and in turn that step up uh, It's not terrible, but it's not the best, you know, like I said, this would not be when I go for long writing sessions But again, that's a personal preference Personal thing there too, but overall I'm really happy with the build quality even the nib. It's not like I said a hundred a uh, hundred percent there's a bit when you look at the slit there under the magnifying glass so on the bottom side there appears to be a little tiny burr on the inside. So I'm going to take rid of that, uh, get rid of that, sorry, with the micro mesh. But even the gap, I put my feeler gauge in there right away when I got it. It was good. The alignment was good. Flow was, is dead nuts of where it should be. So yeah, this would definitely be a good pen to get. If you like this type of thing, I would have no problem recommending this or saying this is a good pen to uh, start off in your fountain pen collection. So that's all I got. If you want to get a little more information, of course, there is no shortage of reviews. Check those out if uh, I missed some holes, but I thought I would come at it from the engineering sort of build construction angle. I think this is a good little ticket for the price they got. 
and the uh, design decisions, build decisions they made with what they're working with, I think they hit it right on point. So you're not sacrificing quality um, for, for cost, right? So they did a good job there. I'll leave it at that. Leave some comments. Let me know if you've had any issues with breakage. Like I said, that one part there at the section where the converter slips in or the cartridge, I could see a potential issue. Other than that, it's a solid performer. We'll leave it at that and we will catch you next time.